Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to a new episode of Learning C++20. So, in this episode of the series, we're going to be taking a look at Atomic Ref, which as of right now is only implemented in GCC 10. So let's go ahead and get started, and first we'll take a look at Atomic, uh, as it was implemented in C++11. So why do we want uh, Atomic operations, or why do we want atomicity? Well, when we have multiple threads that are going to be touching the same you know, piece of data, or the same spot in memory, what we'd really like to do is we'd like to have a well-defined behavior when one thread writes to an atomic object and one thread reads from it, right? So we can get this through std atomic. But there's an extra cost here. In a lot of cases, we have programs where we have regions where we need this atomicity, but then we'll have other you know, well-defined regions where we don't actually need this atomicity and we'd rather not pay the price for having, say, an atomic in that area. Right, so with that, we have atomic references, and this helps solve that problem. So with an atomic reference, we can have a normal uh, integer or object like a struct, as you can see here. And instead of making the struct or the integer atomic, we can just have an atomic reference to that object, that integer. Right, so instead of making the entire thing atomic, we can selectively have atomicity here when we're going through the atomic reference. So, you know, one of the things we can do here, we'll show a quick example using um, an integer, taking an atomic reference to it, and then we can atomically increment it just with the plus plus operator. And you can see that this is for uh, atomic ref of the integral type, right, or of this uh, pointer type. So let's go ahead and jump into our example here. So let's uh, go ahead and go back to um, our atomic ref, and let's open up our example atomic ref.cpp. So here we have a pretty simple example. We create a normal integer a, so we don't need to create an atomic int here. And then we take an atomic reference to it. So this is just atomic ref um, for an integer. And then we're creating ref, right? So this is the name of our reference using a, which is just our integer. And then we create a simple lambda here. And this lambda is going to do something, um, which is just going to, or it's basically just going to atom or atomically increment this integer a through the atomic reference. So you see in here, we're uh, atomically updating um, this reference. As we showed, if we do plus plus on reference and it's to an integral type, right? It's basically an atomic increment. And then we see down here, we're just gonna spawn four threads that do this work, uh, that all do the exact same function, that all are updating the exact same integer through that reference. And then we go ahead and join the threads and we print out the value here. So what we should expect, seeing as we've uh, we've gone ahead and um, initialized a to zero, and we have four threads that are each going to atomically increment um, 10,000 times, we should get a final result of 40,000. So if we go ahead and uh, compile this, so if we go ahead and uh, we'll do that with uh, std equals c++2a to get c++20, and then uh, link against libp thread, uh, that's how thread is implemented on my machine we can see that every single time you run this application, we'll get the result of 40,000. All right, so just to kind of show why we need to atomically uh, update um, A, let's go ahead and try to um, do this update from multiple threads without using this atomic, um, without using this um, atomic reference. So here we're just manually updating A, which is not atomic, it's just a normal integer here. Right? So let's go ahead and we'll uh, recompile using G++. And now you see that every single time we run the application, we get kind of a random result because there's a race condition here. We're not guaranteeing this, uh, we're not guaranteeing atomicity of these operations. We may get lucky and each of the threads will all complete, as you can see happened here, where they, you know, all the threads kind of work together um, or worked on their own, but happened to get to the right result, but it's not guaranteed, right? So there may be some cases where we are not going to get the right result because we're not guaranteeing that this at this uh, increment is atomic, right? And so again, one way we could fix this is by just making A an atomic integer. But another nice way that we can do if we don't want to pay the cost of making A an atomic integer, we can just take an atomic reference to it and selectively make it atomic or do atomic operations on it through that reference. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. It's a basic introduction to these atomic references as introduced in C20. As always, all this code is available at github.com slash coffee before arch. So if we go into repositories, we can find the code for this and all of our other series. So here's C20, here's Atomic Ref. 
So feel free to download this, play around with it, let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.